It's like every time I want to film, my skin is like, no. Hey guys, welcome back. If you are new to my channel, my name is Alexandra in LA. I don't usually start off videos looking like this, but uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. So today I am going to be showing you how I do my looks for Pat McGrath. If you don't know, I do create the smoky eye images, images, not videos, the images that are on the Pat McGrath social media. You're gonna see them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. They're probably going to be in your Sephora emails. You'll see them in ads on Pinterest. They're pretty much all over the internet. A lot of people don't know that they're my eyes. They are my eyes. They are me doing my makeup on me, taking the photos myself. It's different <laughs> from how I do like regular makeup if I'm gonna be actually wearing my makeup. So when I got out of the shower, I moisturized my face with the ordinary or 100% organic cold pressed rose hip seed oil. I like using facial oil. I've been going between this one and then the CBD oil from Herbivore. Now these are macro eye shots. So we are getting very close to my skin and my eyes. You're gonna see every tiny little detail. And if you know anything about photography or uh, makeup for like photo shoots, less is always better. <laughs> so the way I do it is one eye at a time. So I'm just gonna be showing you this eye today. I am going to go in with a little bit of foundation to give my skin some color. So when I do this, I'm like all up in my mini ring light, which I'm gonna show you later on. So it really washes out my skin color. So I actually use the shade that I use when I have a fake tan. So it's not gonna match my skin at all. But I'm not going in with any bronzer or anything like that. And when I add like highlight and stuff, it kind of helps to create a little bit more dimension in the skin and make the eyeshadows pop even more if I'm using a slightly darker shade. So I'm gonna take, oh, this is by the way, the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover. I've been absolutely loving this. So I just kind of take like a tiny bit like that. And then I blend that out with the Morphe G40 brush. I'm like hardly touching my skin with the brush itself. I'm gonna leave my under eye bare because I just like to get kind of an idea of the skin right now. I'm gonna be going in with concealer after we go into their eyeshadow. I always keep a paper towel and I'll just kind of like wipe my brush off and go back in and basically using like feathering motions. Um, so next I'm gonna go in and do my brows. Now for brows, I go in much harder than I do for like real life. I just did the brows that I do on a regular basis. It doesn't look as impressive. I have been starting out with a pencil lately. So this is the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim Brow Pencil, and this is in the shade Light Blonde. So I'm gonna sketch out the shape with this. This is actually a really nice brow pencil, by the way, if you're looking for drugstore. They have so many nice colors. And I like to go in with like a warmer blonde color first for the initial fill. I just kind of like lightly fill the whole brow. So you can see we have like a nice rudimentary filling. So now what I'm gonna do, and I tend to switch up these pomades. Right now, I feel like using the Kat Von D Super Brow. This is in the shade Light Brown. I don't know about light brown, guys. It's pretty like dark brown, but um, I'm gonna go in and draw individual hairs. Oh, and I'm also using the NYX, Oh, what number is this though? I don't know, it's the NYX Angled Brow Brush. I don't even know if you can see me right now because I really got to get in here to see this detail. All right, so now I'm going to go in with a little flat brush. This is from ColourPop. It's the E3. And I'm going to use that same foundation shade just to do a little bit of cleanup. I like to clean up the edges, but I don't want it to look like so carved out. I like using the foundation shade because it helps you create like a nice natural line without making it look like a little too intense. So I've recently started using the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow primer because it's just like a nice color. It's light enough that it makes pigments pop like crazy. And it's also very velvety. So it makes blending really easy. I used to just use like a tiny dab of concealer and then I would set kind of like around the crease and then this area with powder. I don't really do that anymore. Now I just kind of take like a tiny little bit of this primer. I take like that much to begin with, which is probably way too much place it right here. And then it was definitely too much. So I'm gonna wipe off the excess and then continue to pat and like kind of blending it into that foundation shade. And I'm really focusing the pigment. This was a lot easier when I didn't have claws. Usually I'll get like a tight because I did prime with oil, my skin with oil and I want it to be like nice and hydrated. I'll get like a little bit of creasing right in there. So I'm gonna wait just like a second for that to set a little bit. And then I pat out the creasing and then we'll start it in blending. Um, so I am going to be using the Mothership, is this the Mothership 5 palette? Like I said, I work with Pat. So I received this way before anyone knew about it, which is why it says, do not photograph all over it. Also on the inside. <laughs> I'm gonna be starting off with the this shade right here, this like lighter matte brown. And I'm gonna start building that up in the crease. And to build that up, I'm gonna be going in with the Morphe M433 brush. So, you know, like a MAC 217 kind of situation. I feel like this is a little bit smaller. Maybe they're the same size. I haven't used a MAC 
217 in a while. So you can see that I have like a tiny bit of creasing. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like pushing downward. The only reason this is really happening is because I primed my whole face with the oil. So I do have a little bit of, because I don't know if you guys can see that at all. Maybe you can't, but I have like a little bit of scaliness happening on my eyelids because I've been washing my face so much because I've been doing these looks so much. So it's kind of taking a toll on my skin. Uh, the camera does not know what it's focusing on. This is, mm, I think my favorite Pat McGrath palette. It's kind of hard to pick one, but the colors are just so fucking nice, man. So many beautiful neutrals, lid shades. The eyeshadow situation is like pretty similar to what I usually do. Um, I'm gonna show just you just like a classic smoky eye. It is a little hard because the angle of this is a little different. And also I don't think I've ever done this with contacts in before. So part of the blending is really just about like, um, it's about blending that shadow seamlessly into the skin. So I'm gonna slowly build that color up into the crease. And I like to get more and more precise as we build the pigment. And I always keep a paper towel for foundations and also to wipe off brushes because I really like going in with clean brushes because I feel like it tends to remove product. So I'll wipe off a brush so that it has like a tiny amount of product on it. All right, guys, so the key to this look is precision. I'm gonna keep saying that literally throughout the entire video. Speaking of precision, I love using the Sigma Precision <laughs> brush collection. So this is the detailed diffused crease brush. And now I'm going to pick up the slightly darker brown color, this guy right here. And I'm placing this like right on the bottom of my, of that bone right there. And right now I'm just gonna place the shape down that I want, like basically where I want it. It's also a lot about like how you hold your brush. So like I'll do that when I wanna like pack on the pigment and then kinda do this so that there's more precision on the tip of the brush. And then the upper part of the bristles kind of does the blending for you. Now I'm gonna go back in with that first brown on that first brush. And I'm gonna take that on the line where those two shades meet and start blending. This is once again from the Sigma Precision Collection and this is the Precise Firm Blender Brush. And I'm going to be picking up this Kind of like purpley shade. I always tap off my brush, by the way. So once I go into the product, I tap it off, especially when it's a matte and I'm trying to blend. And then I'm gonna be doing basically the same thing. So I'm placing it right where I want it to be deepest. So once I place it down, then I'll start to kind of like blend a little bit. And then I basically do the same process. So I'll grab that, what's it called? Detailed diffused crease brush, go in with the middle brown, and then kind of just like pat over that. And if I feel like that's just too dark, then I'll go back in with the other brush. But I usually do end up going back in with the other brush, whether it's clean or I place like a tiny bit of shadow down. This is obviously very dark and super smoky. I think I wanna use this guy because it's just so beautiful. It's kind of like a rose and then it's got maybe like a pale gold reflect to it. Um, and I usually use my finger, honestly. I just pick it up on my ring finger, place it down like this basically just like patting with a little bit of a drag. And that's the best payoff, I think. These shades apply so beautifully with your finger. And then as I get closer to my inner corner, I just kind of like roll, roll and pat. And I mean like, look at that fucking payoff. Like, are you kidding me? And I'll pick up maybe just like a tiny bit more, really press it into the skin. But this is why I do concealer last, because <laughs> you can get a lot of, well, there's really not any fallout. Um, and usually with these looks, I kind of like, I explained this actually in my last video, I think, kind of just pat the shimmer, like whatever's left on the edge of my finger, I kind of just like pat it up into the matte shade. So pretty. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that Anastasia primer. I don't know if you guys can see how much that is, but it's very small. And I'm gonna run that along my lower lash line. And then even that is kind of a lot. So I'm gonna wipe it off. And I have a lot of creasing underneath my eyes, which is one of the reasons that I make my under eyes so smoky all the time, to kind of like cover that up. But I wanna make sure that like, I'm patting out the majority of the creasing before I'm going in with my shadows. So the sharpening job on this is real bad, but this is the Pat McGrath Black Coffee Perma Gel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil. So this is what I'm gonna go into my waterline with. So I like to take it all on my waterline and even drag it down onto the lower lash line a little bit because then I can kind of like blend the darkest eyeshadow. 
into it. My eyes are watering because I've got my contacts in, so it's not sticking to that part right now. Um, and then I like using blending brushes for my lower lash line. So I'm actually going to grab the Precision Firm Blender from Sigma again, and I'm gonna start off with the eggplant shade, basically patting it onto that color, onto that liner. Wow, I wish my eye would stop watering. Drag that up and connect it with the top really lightly in this area, because I think I'm gonna go in with the winged liner. I'm gonna grab the medium brown, same brush, go over that. This is really hard to do, sorry. My mirror, I have to like be looking like this into my mirror. Now I'm gonna go in with that final light brown and I'm kind of going over it. I'm just like blending all of those colors. And if I bring anything down way too low, I'm gonna go in with concealer, so. I'm gonna grab the first blending brush that we used and the first brown color and blend this area a little bit more. So I'm placing shadow down like right here. Then I'm gonna wipe off my brush and then blend into the skin. It's gonna get real blown out. So this is the Perma Precision Liquid Eyeliner, once again by Pat McGrath Labs. It's a felt tipped liner. I'm gonna do a little color correcting, I totally forgot. So I use my Ben Nye Cover All Wheel brush that I'm gonna to use to apply that. The Morphe M456 brush. So it's just this tiny blender brush. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this shade right here, the orangey shade, which I've used so much of, just cause I have so much darkness in here. I'm placing it like right in here and up into the inner part. And I'm trying so hard not to bring it anywhere near my creases because I'll get creasing and you'll see that in the photos. So that just adds like a little bit of coverage, a little bit of brightening. Once again, we're using like so mi like minimal product. <laughs> look how different my eyes look. And then I'm gonna take the tiniest bit of the Too Faced Born this way, but right there. I literally just like slowly build it up because again, I'm trying to be precise. I just want this to be exactly where like where I want it. I'm gonna go in with a clean brush. This is the Morphe, I don't know what this is from. It's from the Golden Black Collection. <laughs> it's a Morphe brush. Just blend around these edges. This got a little bit harsh. So I'm blending around the edge of the concealer and the eyeshadow. All right, for my inner corner, I'm gonna use a little, a little guy. I don't know where this brush came from. I use it all, where'd it go? I think I got it at Walmart. Like, I don't even know when I was 14 or something. <laughs> I'm gonna use this little guy. It's just a little detail brush and I'm gonna pick up the shade. I'm gonna tap it, my inner corner, really gently. And I like to tap it out a little farther than you think it should go because it really just creates like that glow when you photograph it. I kinda want it to glow from like every angle, whether it's like straight on or you're turning. Now I like to really go in with the highlight. So I'm obviously gonna be using her Sublime Skin Highlighter. This is such beautiful packaging, it's like insane. This is my second one. Um, and then I don't know how well the colors are sh Oh! My world just ended. Oh my God. We popped it back in, but I'm not showing that to you anymore. Anyway, there's a bronze, a gold, and then like a pink color. So I'm gonna be going in with the gold shade and highlight, and I basically highlight like every section of my fucking face. Oh, oh man, oh. I'm actually gonna be using the Wayne Goss something brush. I don't know. I'm gonna use this guy. Pat and blend, pat and blend. Oh yeah, and I go really intense on the highlights, by the way. <laughs> I like to put a little bit right in here and then above my eyebrow. Um, okay, so now before I set my brows and go in with mascara and lashes, I'm just going to set this. Especially if I'm going in with like a powder highlight, I just like to set it. So I actually like using this because it just like adds to the payoff, which we don't really need to intensify, but you know. This is the Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist by Glow Recipe. Just holding it pretty far away especially focusing it here. All right, to set my eyebrows, I'm going to go back in with my little NYX brush. I'm gonna use the spoolie and I'm gonna be using my Dr. Bronner's soap. 
Now, sometimes when I'm blending and stuff, I mess up the line of my brows a little bit, or like I'll accidentally remove a little bit of coverage, or when I brush this out, I'll remove a little bit. And then I'll go in with either a little bit more of the pomade, or sometimes I like to use the Glossier Brow Flick, because it just helps you to add in like individual hairs. That's an option, I don't always do it, but I probably would in this case, just because this is a very intense eye look. So I am going to curl my lashes and go in with a few coats of the Pat McGrath Mascara. I try to make my lower lashes really long and I'm afraid it's gonna get on my lower lash line. So this is the finished look before we pop on any lashes. Um, okay, so for lashes, I'm gonna go in, I think with these velour lashes, they are in the style. I have no idea what the name of these lashes is, but they're by Velour. Sometimes your lash application fucks up your liner. Sometimes you fuck up your lash application. Squeezing your natural lashes to your false lashes is the key to making things look seamless, by the way. All right, guys, that's how I do my Pat McGrath eye looks. Um, so I'll obviously check to see if I have any creasing underneath my eyes. Obviously when I'm like actually wearing my makeup, I have to set my under eyes because it will crease over time. But this is all about getting like perfection in the photograph. I'll tell you how I shoot them, but I'm not gonna show you how I shoot them, especially since I'm filming on the camera that I use. And also I'm not telling you how I edit them. I'm sorry. I know people wanna know. <laughs> It's like my value as a creator, you know what I mean? It's also, these aren't just images that I'm doing for myself. I'm doing them for Pat. So I'm not showing you all the secrets, but these, this is how I do the actual makeup. When I do shoot the photos, I'm usually like this angle and I have the camera down here. Um, I do use a prime lens. I think my prime lens is from Canon. It is, it's a Canon. And then I have this little guy. I can't remember the name of the company, but I have this little mini ring light. It's bomb. Bomb, I use it all the time. I also use it when I travel. It's amazing. I also got this little tripod from Amazon. I think it was like $300, something like that. Um, and then I don't remember how much the tripod was, maybe like 30 bucks. Oh, that's one thing that I wanted to talk about. Obviously the images are edited. You guys, come on. Like, I mean, I would say that this is a perfect representation of how the makeup looks, but yes, I'm editing out this little bump that I have underneath my eye that drives me crazy that I usually take out of like all of my photos. I would take out that little, uh, I don't know if you can see this little glitter on my lower lash line. I would take that out. I also do not do all of the edits. Pat McGrath Labs has final edits on everything. When people complain about not seeing my skin texture, I'm like, bro. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I feel very strange right now talking to the camera with one eye on. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.